Well, this is it. This is definitely it. Until this movie came along, it had been over 30 years since the original cast of Ghostbusters officially suited up for a return to the box office. And for the most part, the response has been overwhelmingly positive. Well, 30 plus years is a long time for a franchise with so much source material to sit dormant. Fans like myself did have one other outlet that gave a broader perspective into the world of Ghostbusting. And that came via the real Ghostbusters animated series, which was an excellent supplement to the movies. It's also the reason I'm wearing this ill-fitting Halloween costume, in case that wasn't abundantly clear. As a kid, the new stories, adventures, and of course a wide variety of new ghosts was all I needed to get that Ghostbusters fix I craved. With the success of the real Ghostbusters series came a slew of merchandise, and of course a video game. So today, let's take a look at one of my all-time favorite arcade cabinet games, the real Ghostbusters. Today, are you afraid of ghosts? Do you get chills from scary thrills? Well, have no fear, because guess who's here? Somebody seen a ghost? Based on the hit movie, The Real. Capture the ghosts, collect the keys, save the city. That pretty much sums up this game, so I guess my work here is done. The Real Ghostbusters was an animated spin-off to 1984's Ghostbusters, which ran from 1986 to 1991. The show was titled The Real Ghostbusters, due to a dispute with Filmation, who also had a property named Ghostbusters, which was a short-lived live-action sitcom from 1975 that later spawned a cartoon to capitalize on the name value of the 1984 movie, of which it had no relation to. Additionally, in the real Ghostbusters episode, Take Two, where the Ghostbusters fly to Hollywood to visit the set of a movie based on their adventures, it's revealed that the movie the Ghostbusters were on set to visit and consult for was in fact the 1984 movie, establishing that the 1984 movie was based off the characters from the animated series. Now I of course love Ghostbusters and equally love the real Ghostbusters animated series which significantly and successfully expanded on the Ghostbusters universe, at least until the show jumped the shark a bit later on in the series. The Real Ghostbusters game is a 1987 shoot 'em up arcade game, developed and published by Data East in the United States, and is loosely based on the animated series of the same name. In Japan, Data East released an alternate version as a non-Ghostbusters arcade game under the title Mekiu Hunter G. However, the Real Ghostbusters game improved upon the Japanese version by making it more in tune with the Ghostbusters theme and by making use of at least a handful of characters from the animated series. In 1989, Activision published the real Ghostbusters for several home units, including the Amiga, the Atari ST, Commodore 64, and the ZX Spectrum. The arcade version features 10 levels, each viewed from an overhead perspective. The player controls a member of the Ghostbusters team who must defend against various ghosts while completing each level on a time limit. Ghosts are killed if the player shoots them, and the player can earn bonus points by trapping each ghost's soul, which is done by using a proton beam to suck in the ghost's ghost, which seems a bit redundant. I mean, who knew a ghost had a ghost? And if that's the case, where does it end? Does a ghost's ghost have a ghost? Are there a string of ghosts within a ghost, like some sort of supernatural Russian nesting doll? For the purposes of this game, these questions go unanswered, but inquiring minds want to know. The 
Bonus items that can aid the player are hidden throughout the game in objects such as oil drums and wheelbarrows, which include weapons upgrades, and even Slimer who makes a cameo by protecting the player by killing enemies who get too close. Now I'm playing this game on my sometimes glitchy, preloaded arcade game emulator, which can be a little hit or miss, and for whatever reason, some of the upgrades never took effect. The end of each level features a boss enemy who must be defeated, leaving behind a key that allows the player to access the next level, and that same formula is repeated throughout the game. Keep in mind, this was originally an arcade game and a bit of a quarter sucker at that. So while the gameplay never changes, the curiosity as to what came next was what kept you going. At least until you ran out of quarters. When this game came out, there weren't a lot of places I came across it. But I grew up in New Hampshire, which is also the home to the Guinness World Record holding World's Largest Arcade, known as Fun Spot, located in New Hampshire's Lakes region. And they had everything. And for a place that had hundreds of arcade cabinets, this is the one I'd scour the building for. If you ever find yourself in central New Hampshire, be sure to check out Fun Spot, but just be prepared to part with all your quarters. The arcade cabinet version of this game accommodated three players, and at the time, with all the fast-paced action and limited number of quarters I had to plug into the machine, I missed that some of the characters were actually pulled from the franchise. Initially, I didn't think anything had carried over from the animated series, but upon closer look years later, some of the very early ghosts from the animated series were, with quite a few being taken from the rarely seen real Ghostbusters promo pilot. Characters lifted from the promo pilot included the Creepy Thing Ghost, the Bowtied Elephant Ghost, and the Braided Hair Ghost. Additionally, the Toy Ghost from Season 1, Episode 1, Ghosts R Us, appears in the game as a boss character, none of which I ever got far enough in the game back in the day to recognize. Also a wide variety of original ghosts, spooks, and specters that fill out the game, most of which fit seamlessly in the real Ghostbusters universe. All except for maybe the cult leader characters, which resemble extras from Mississippi Burning, but with the way things have been going lately, I'm just glad somebody's zapping these guys. If you had to force feed an arcade cabinet quarters to play this game, I could see how it could be frustrating. But in the versions where you're not required to spend all your laundry money, I think it's a fun game. Sure, it's ten levels of fairly mindless and repetitive gameplay where the ghost can be sometimes overwhelming and the soundtrack can just drone on too long, but the fast-paced action and constant need to be alert help make the game move at a brisk pace. In all honesty, if this game didn't have the Ghostbusters license attached to it, I wouldn't have played it nearly as much as I did as a kid, but it still would have been a decent game, so what do I know anyway? I don't have ESP, so if you ever come across this game, see for yourself. Personally, for a game pulled from another game that had no relation, based on an animated series that's based off a movie, not based off an earlier live-action series of the same name that later released its own cartoon to piggyback on the success of the movie, it's not bad. 